Hello and greetings from Iceland. In this volcano update, we have plenty to talk about. Since the uh, mighty volcano Katla was placed on aviation code yellow yesterday morning, and a level of uncertainty was declared a few hours later by the civil defense, or shortly after we got this rather strong earthquake swarm. But Katla is a known uh, teaser, but this time we might be looking at something different. Perhaps not in the next days, but the volcano is clearly trying to tell us something new. This is the largest earthquake swarm since 2016, and the second largest since modern seismic monitoring began in 1991, and it was very noticeable how strongly the science community in Iceland uh, reacted yesterday. At the beginning, the experts were clearly interpreting this as a possible start of a major event, but in the afternoon, we got new information that point to unrest due to geothermal heat and water, rather than magma on the move. But they declared a level of uncertainty anyway, and we must bear in mind that the last three months have been interesting, but like I mentioned uh, in my last update, the river Mulakvist, gas pollution was detected there recently, or where the river flows from the glacier above the caldera, so yesterday, the road up there was closed, and glacier tours were cancelled. So this has been taken very seriously by the civil defense, who have actually practiced this response for decades, since the bottom line is that Katla has been overdue for a long, long time, and it is therefore the best guarded volcano in Iceland because of its proximity to the village Vík, which is a very popular tourist spot, so we are just trying to make sure that it's not going to be a human disaster in addition to the natural disaster that Katla eruptions truly are. And we know for sure that the nature around there will change forever after Katla takes off the next time. And we could expect the eruption to last for one, two, three months, judging from history. However, nothing is indicating an eruption just now and today, Friday, Things are back to normal again, business as usual. So what I'm going to do now is to leave a link to the online webcams, the seismometers, and if things will uh, turn serious there, I will of course take off to the south coast and uh, cover that eruption that might likely become uh, Eyjafjallajökull times 10. However, I'm not sure if I need to this time, and I do actually have plenty of other things to do. Like, uh, I need to make videos about the Grimsvatn volcano soon, it's something going on under the Vatnajökull glacier for sure, it might be the eruption that we have been expecting for the last three years at least, and the seismic activity there is constantly increasing. And I can say the same about the westernmost part of the Reykjanes Peninsula, where we got a green star on the map yesterday, from a magnitude 3 plus earthquake offshore, and the Turnus fracture zone doesn't look good as well. So it's just widespread tension all around. And uh, as for me and the new thermal drone, my plan was to hit the road and do some tests on the Reykjanes Peninsula, but the weather hasn't been good enough to justify a thousand kilometer drive for two, three minutes of footage. Like uh, it was snowing in Reykjavik recently, and uh, like many of you know, the thermal drone was and still is meant to be a stepping stone for me into the drone business sector. So I've been using the yellow season as a tent to call the spring to make a homepage for the drone services I will be offering. And it's a bit more work than I expected since I'm also in a way structuring a new company that's supposed to make it possible for me to uh, be on the road for months. It's not cheap to travel in Iceland. And my YouTube income last year didn't even cover my petrol bill. But the time I'm investing in a channel is a long-term investment, like driving around, gathering footage from the plate boundaries and such. And I'm also gathering footage for photo stock agencies. And since December, I've uploaded around 800 fully processed video clips and photos to Pond5, where I'm focusing on geology, nature, green energy and more topics. And while I'm doing those uploads, I'm also sorting my photo stock finding the mistakes that I can't fix in post, or learning, so this has been very time consuming. I'm not just uploading just anything to photostock agencies, and recently I bought this nice little software to clean low light noise from video clips, and each minute I have to clean takes around one hour for my Mac to process, plus the work to adjust the settings, 
so I won't lose any sharpness while doing this, but when this work is done, it's going to be so much easier for me to uh, see what I have, learn from the mistakes I made uh, last year, and from those terabytes of footage I'm working through, I'm also uh, making my own portfolio that I will be using in my marketing, so this is uh, very time consuming, but it has to be done. If it's going to be an eruption in Katla in the coming weeks and months, it's going to be a major challenge to cover it. We can expect that uh, the area around uh, the volcano will be closed, a large area. That might go on for days or weeks, and the flood that we expect can be as large as 300,000 cubic meters per second, or uh, a mega flood in worst case scenario. And I am sure that not only will the ring road close, some parts of it will disappear, or most likely around here, to the east from the village week. So I've been thinking about this for a long time and uh, expecting this just like the civil defense. And my plan includes uh, potential road closures, so I might have to drive from the north by the east coast all the way to a village called the Kirkjubæjar cluster, but I'm quite sure that I won't be able to get closer to the volcano than that. But uh, from the east, I do have a clear and unhindered views to the glacier, or a view that can be harder to get from the other side, plus it's more likely now that the eruption will take place on the east side of this enormous caldera up there. And uh, let's say that I'm right about that, the only view will be from the east, like to capture the lightning explosions and some of the floods maybe from a drone, I would still have to deal with the fact that me and others with cameras might not get closer than 50 kilometers. So drones won't do that much for us, but uh, I do have a 500 millimeter lens on my Nikon DSLR. And this is a sample from it, 50 kilometers away from the eruption in 2021. And this is outlook uh, 30 kilometers away. So... Uh, from 50 kilometers away, if I hike up on higher grounds, I might be able to catch something, but it's no coincidence that I added a super zoom camera on my wish list uh, on my uh, buy me a coffee donation site. So it uh, might just be that we will find ourselves in the position that we won't get anything uh, as visual as we want to have it, unless we use an Icon P1000 or something similar. But I've been looking at this camera for some time. I also want to try to do some moon and astro videos from Iceland. It's one of the best places in the world to do so. So my plan is that if and when Katla erupts, I want to do live streams. But uh, that is not going to happen from fully booked hotels. Everything is sold out by the south coast this summer. So one of the next obstacles to deal with is to get myself a, a car like this, where I can have... Uh, power outlets, have my computer there so I can do editing while on the road, charge uh, all batteries. So this is what I'm aiming at, or a sort of a volcano chasing vehicle where I can maximize my chances to get uh, good footage. And this is also something that might be necessary if and when the Askja volcano erupts, and actually Grimsvatn too. And we have to remember how extremely lucky we got with the last two eruptions, or how easy it was to get there, and we will not get so lucky when it comes to uh, Katla, Grimsvatn or Askja. So this summer will be busy, and don't think for a moment that uh, I won't be showing you any thermal footage. I have mapped the summer, more or less, from a map that uh, shows uh, all hot areas in Iceland, and I believe that many of them can show us something interesting from the thermal cam, but it's only one way to find out. So I look forward to get on the road, or when I finish the formalities with the homepage. And uh, I also have to make some intro videos, or uh, from this huge bunch of videos that I have been processing lately. So I will be uploading something new from the thermal camera soon. And it's not just me that is getting ready for the summer, we have seven volcanoes getting ready for an eruption in total, so this summer might turn into something very special. But what volcano will erupt next, it's just hard to say. There are just too many options. I had my bet on Askja the other day, but I think I'm going to place it on Grimsvatn. But I'm working on a time-lapse for that, so I will show that to you soon. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Vulcan Island, Iceland.